Today we live in a world that is fast paced and technologically advanced with towering skyscrapers and impressive steel buildings. But how long do we actually think these structures will last? Modern buildings go up in the fastest way possible using construction techniques that leave them vulnerable to natural disasters. Can you envision your community lasting over 2,000 years? While many modern buildings would not, the ancient city of Ossia Antica still stands today because of the time and effort the Romans invested in their construction techniques. There are many reasons why Ostia Antica is still here. One of the most important factors is the engineering, the construction materials, how the Romans built. They built to last an eternity. Ostia Antica is still intact because for a very long time, the entire site was covered over. So when Ostia is getting abandoned in the fifth century and the sixth centuries AD, it eventually is covered over by debris. It is covered over by the continual inundation of the Tiber River, and then it largely is underground until excavations in the 1800s, then in the early 20th century, and then the big excavations of the fascist period reveal so much of what you see today in Ostia Antica. One of the biggest moments in its history when the building is at its greatest height is in the period of the emperors Trajan and Hadrian, and that's where much of the city is renewed and structures like this are erected. Ostia is a quite large city for ancient times. It's hard to know the exact uh, acreage, but it's around 150 or more acres. When you come to the site of Ostia today, you're looking at about 80 to 90 acres as you're walking through the site. That's a really large site to go and visit on average you know, on a day. It's, it's, a, it's a huge city. The longevity of the site of Ostia is uh, determined by the fact that there is so much material here, so much ample material to be used and then reutilized over time. So by the time we're talking about this space here, for example, in the Severan period, you have a lot of material that's going through a second and third life, and that's going to keep the cost down. So as the population in a site like Ostia shrinks over time, being overshadowed by nearby portus, then you have fewer people with a lot of material that suddenly becomes more and more abundant to them that they can utilize and use for new decoration and new constructions. The fundamental materials used in Ostia's construction included tuff, cement, brick, wood, and various stones. What we would have had uh, is these, this large amount of concrete which is placed on top of the brick wall construction, and then ultimately they're placing bits and pieces of fragments of marble paneling onto which they're going to ultimately affix their panels of the decorative marble. Now here, we don't have any of those marble panels preserved, but over here, we do. And this is Proconesian marble, which comes from Turkey. We are astounded today by the fact that so much of this is still here. And yet, today, technologically, we're so much more advanced with our steels and our titanium and our plastics, composites, and so forth. Despite all the great materials that we have available to us today, the materials that the ancients used were so resistant, were so well made, that they still resist. They're still here. The people that build Ossia, the people that build Rome, they are day laborers. They are, for the most part, freed people. And then within that work, it's contracted out, there will be slaves as well. But you've got a program in which people, the locals, are employed so much of the time with building. One of the great differences between building today and building in ancient times is here, everything is built by hand. You think about how much we have in Western civilization that is automated, but here everything is being produced by hand. We don't have a machine that's going to be making the bricks in a mold. It's a person that's taking the clay, and is working the clay and is ultimately putting it in the mold which is then ultimately going to be fired by other people that are stoking that fire to ultimately heat up the bricks and make them so resistant. When we talk about the arch, we think about ancient Rome. Why is that? Well, because they perfected its use. So they don't invent it, it's been around for a very long time, but they take it, let's say by the third century BC and they're making it their own. What you see here is the arch that's completed. Uh, but what you start off with is you've got your walls however high you want them to be. And this is what's going to bear the brunt of, of the weight of all of the mass 
up on top. So basically, when you construct the arch, all that thrust is being pushed off to the sides. So what you do in this empty space is as you've built up your sidewalls here, or your piers, then you fill this all in with wooden uh, shuttering and uh, centering. Sometimes you see another kind of arch that's employed, uh, and that's not one that has an opening, but one that's sometimes in the middle of a wall, a solid wall. So what's the point of that? That's called a relieving arch. So the idea is that when the buildings get so large and the walls are so thick, sometimes the constructions are so complicated with the various kinds of thrusts and tensions, and you decide that I've got to insert some of these in the fabric of the wall as well to dissipate a lot of the tension, the inherent tension that builds up within the construction uh, of the large walls. Today, if we were trying to replicate the city of Rome or the city of Ostia, could we even afford it? Could we afford to build the exterior wall, the Colosseum, which is 100,000 tons of travertine stone that's quarried block by block by people, by hand? No, we're not, we can't afford that. Today, we're all about speed and efficiency when we build, and the Romans were the same. But overall, that process for so much of the building was slower. So today, we can cook the materials, the limestone to make it into lime, much faster at a higher temperature. And ultimately, that product that we have isn't as resistant, isn't as uh, long-lasting as the limestone that the Romans cook for a lower temperature, but over a longer period of time. That material is more resistant. Thousands of people visit the city of Ossia Antica each year and leave amazed by the vast area of ruins still intact. These walls have stood the test of time because of the careful construction techniques used by the Romans thousands of years ago.